This little grass may not look like much by itself, but since it tends to grow in large monoculture patches, it is one of the worst woodland, non-woody invasive species in the eastern United States. So what is this terrible exotic invasive grass, and how do you deal with it? Japanese stilt grass, Microstegium viminium, is native to southern, eastern, and southeast Asia, and was accidentally introduced into Tennessee in 1919 from its use as packing material and shipments of porcelain from China. It spread rapidly and is now widespread throughout the eastern United States. Stilt grass is adapted to a wide variety of conditions, but it tends to cause the most trouble in shaded areas like woods edges and somewhat open woods. While it grows aggressively in disturbed areas, it also can invade undisturbed areas and form dense monocultures that inhibit the growth of native vegetation. Large herbivores do not eat it. A few insects do, but not to any extent that will slow the spread of stilt grass. Along with the fact that it suppresses native plants, and nothing really eats it, Another horrible aspect of stilt grass is those large, dense monocultures are death traps for turkey poults and quail chicks. If they must cross a dew-drenched stilt grass patch, they will become soaked poults and chicks. And soaked poults and chicks are dead poults and chicks due to hypothermia. So yeah, stilt grass is terrible. If you love helping wild turkey poults by promoting native plants, give that like button a peck. Luckily, stilt grass is easy to identify. While it can grow to be three feet tall, it generally lays across the ground and looks much shorter. It can climb over other vegetation and may be found completely covering lower growing plants. The stem is jointed and roots can form at each node if they contact the soil. The leaves are quite broad for a grass, especially when it is growing in the shade, and are around eight times as long as they are wide. There is a distinctive silver stripe of hairs down the center of each leaf. In September through October, the grass will develop from one to three flower spikes, but hopefully you will have dealt with it before this happens. More on this in a bit. You can walk your woods looking for stilt grass in the winter as it will form a distinctive, dense tan mat that covers everything. This will let you know where to start your control efforts in the spring. Once you get an eye for stilt grass, it is easy to spot, and unfortunately, you will likely see it everywhere. Now that you know what to look for, how do you go about ridding your property of stilt grass? There are a couple of options, but before we get to them, let's discuss what the goals of the control methods are. Of course, one goal is to kill the existing plants, but this must be done before they set seed. Stiltgrass seed can persist in the soil for up to seven years, so controlling it is normally a multi-year process. The good news is, the amount of stiltgrass that sprouts each year will decrease if you get it before it sets seed. This is super important. So pick one of the control methods I'm about to cover that suits your individual situation, get after the stilt grass early, and be sure to kill them all. That last statement made me think of a question. Which do you prefer, Metallica or Megadeth? Let me know down in the comments. The first stilt grass control method is a simple mechanical method, hand pulling. For small infestations, this is probably the best method. Stilt grass is an annual grass with a super shallow root system. It pulls from the ground easily, and once pulled, that plant will not re-sprout. If it is not in flower, you can just pile up the pulled plants and leave them in the woods, or they can be composted. Once stilt grass starts to flower, hand pulling is the only option as it will set seed before other methods take care of it. When pulling flowering or even seeding stilt grass, it must be bagged and removed. It can be disposed of in the trash, or it can be burned. Please don't burn any plastic bags though. Do not try to compost it as it can set seed in the compost bin if it does not break down quickly enough. Although stilt grass doesn't have spines or sharp leaves, I still prefer to wear gloves while pulling it. I will put a link in the description for my absolute favorite Habitat work gloves. Since stilt grass is so easy to pull, a decent sized area can be controlled this way. Although once the patches start getting over a couple hundred square feet, chemical control, becomes a much better option. Stilt grass is susceptible to several herbicides and often the best choice is a grass specific herbicide applied according to the label for stilt grass control. This will limit the impact of any native vegetation that has been able to hold on during the stilt grass invasion. In areas where there is a total monoculture of stilt grass, a non-selective herbicide can be used, again according to the label. The key is to treat the stilt grass before it starts to flower. This is important, as stilt grass will set seed before the herbicide can do its job. The last thing you want to do is allow it to make seed while at the same time wasting herbicide that will not accomplish your goal. If a patch does start to go to seed and it is too large to hand pull, chopping it down with a string trimmer 
raking and bagging the trimmings, either to be sent out in the garbage or burned, is an option. Again, please don't burn the plastic bags. This is very labor intensive, but at least it keeps the stilt grass from setting seed and putting more seed into the environment. Just be sure to spray that patch earlier next year. There are other short-lived invasive species that can cause huge problems. One of them is poison hemlock. To learn how to control it, check out this video and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.